Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about the new photos. CW is starting to ramp up their push for Supergirl coming back. Obviously, it's coming back in 9 days from now, because it's currently the 21st, and Supergirl Episode 1 is coming out on the 30th. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, we've got some photos to go over. They released a bunch of new photos, which definitely tease what we're going to be seeing in episode one even more than the previous photos. So go check out that video that was like a few days ago that we went over those. Also, the showrunners of Supergirl did a big interview. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So the showrunners, Robert Rovner and Jessica Queller, did an interview with EW. They've been running the show for a few seasons. They had one really good season with season three, and it depends on who you're asking, but they've had mixed success. And lots of people have been asking for new showrunners for quite a long time, but they're going to be sticking around for the final season. And yes, I'm not the biggest fan of them, and I think maybe they should have switched showrunners a couple of seasons ago. They do bring up some interesting stuff every now and again, however they do like to shoehorn in some stuff that doesn't always necessarily work. But their attempts are to be admired and I think the cast and, you know, the writers who actually write the shows definitely have a really good crack at it. And I think that is the main reason why Supergirl is so good, not necessarily just because of the showrunners but because of the cast and the actual writers. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So the EW article goes like this. Like any great hero, Kara Danvers will put her life on the line to save the day as Supergirl's sixth and final season takes flight. So when we last checked in on the CW superhero drama, the villainous Lex Luthor was still at large and Brainy was on the verge of death in Leviathan's toxic ship. In the new season premiere, Kara and the rest of the super friends go to battle at first with Gamini before turning their attention to Lex, who used the Obsidian platform to brainwash half of the world. Unfortunately, what Kara does to defeat the Megalomaniac will have major repercussions on her in the first half of the season, all of which is in service of setting up the Girl of Steel's final journey. So this is a quote from the showrunners. She is going to really sacrifice her life and put her life on the line to save her friends and humanity. She's going to face her mortality in a new way that we've never done on the show. That's really the focus of the first run of seven episodes. It's life or death stakes for Kara and it's very introspective. So all of the soul searching and taking stock of the past six years will happen in the beginning and then she'll put that into play in the back half of the season. So I'm going to quickly break down this little snippet first. So it's very interesting that they confirm basically the first seven episodes is going to be kind of the repercussions of what's happening with Lex and Gamini at the start of episode one and two. So Lex isn't going to be defeated, I believe, until episode two. And so Kara is going to sacrifice her life. And I really do think that she's going to sacrifice her life this time. And I think she may in fact die or she'll be very close to dying and somehow she's going to be put out of action in some way. And the only reason I actually believe something like that is because Melissa wasn't around to film like the first seven episodes, which is just so very fitting that that is the first seven episodes that they've literally dedicated to this. So for five episodes rather than seven, because two of them are going to be a two-part flashback, Young Danvers Midvale crossover episode, you're going to be seeing a bit of Melissa, you're going to be seeing a bit of Kara, I don't know specifically how much on each episode, however Melissa when she did come back in January, she did do a whole month of reshoots, like she was shooting extra stuff that she missed, so I'm presuming there's going to be a chunk of Melissa in it, however the storyline that they're setting up in the first seven episodes definitely seems like they're playing to the idea that Melissa can't be there and she won't be in that much. So I don't know if that's a bit disappointing for Supergirl fans because it is the final season. I'm going to say if she isn't in much of the episodes, I'm going to be disappointed, mainly because it is the final season and don't we all want as much Kara as possible? But then again, I really respect Melissa's situation, so I'm not going to put it on Melissa or anything. I just hope that the story they build around it is good enough to sustain her not being there 24-7 in every episode all the time. So we'll have to wait and see, but let's move on. So it goes, when season 5 ended, Kara and Lena started taking steps towards reconciling after their falling out over Kara's secret identity. And in fact, Lena will take on a new role in the show. 
So this is a quote from the showrunners. Lena is going to become much more of an integral part of the Super Friends this season than ever before, says Quella. So I think that's going to be really satisfying and have an emotional resonance for her because she's always kind of felt like an outsider, not just with Kara's secret, but with the whole group. Now she's going to be a full-on insider, so that will change the dynamic for Lena and the group. So now that is interesting because this basically confirms, yes, Lena is going to be around the tower, which is Team Supergirl's new headquarters recently. So Lena is going to be a much more integral part of the group. And so, like they said, she's not just going to be like a kind of liaison character who they go to every once in a while. She's going to be playing a part in their operations as Team Supergirl. So I'm going to say that is very exciting because I don't think Lena has been that good when she's always on the outside and I think she's best when she's actually on the side of Supergirl and I think the drama really dragged on so much last season it got a little bit crazy by the end because it was going on forever and finally they wrapped it up and you're like oh thank god and so I'm looking forward to Lena being a bigger part of team Supergirl and being their friend rather than being an enemy because I think that's what you have Lex Luthor for to be the evil Luthor because Lena is supposed to be like one of Kara's best friends and I'm happy to see that they're finally doing that. Okay so let's move on to the next thing so real world political and social issues have inspired Supergirl's last two seasons and that will remain the case in the forthcoming run especially in the back half of season six as the show turns its attention to power. And so the quote goes like this, the theme that we really decided to focus on this year is about power and the abuse of power and the limits of powers from without and within. And so not including just our bad guys, which is very easy, but in terms of our heroes making decisions because their power is almost limitless, how do they decide where the line is, says Quella. So co-showrunner Robert Rovner explained they were inspired by both the Black Lives Matter movement and how some people felt somewhat disempowered because of the circumstances that we're all living in with the pandemic. We were trying to reflect on that and kind of try to address what empowers people and what our heroes could do to help both set an example and kind of explore some of the issues that keep people from feeling empowered. So I always think it's very admirable that they try and tackle these big themes on Supergirl and sometimes it's worked. However, sometimes it feels very forced and it's not because I don't agree with what they're saying, like I always agree with the themes that they go for, but it's just the way that sometimes they present it. Sometimes it can feel off and I think it most felt off in season four with the Agent Liberty people where they were kind of like South Park spoof characters and they were like, God damn aliens. And it felt very in your face. And so I'm looking forward to this and I'm very interested to see how they're going to tackle basically superheroes looking at the powers they have and their abuse of power and the limits of their powers and like where do they draw the line so I guess that kind of ties into what is normally a big thing in the comics with like Superman and Batman like do Superman and Batman kill what is right to do that or not so that is a heavy comic book theme so I'm looking forward to that and I'm just interested to see what they do, inspired by real life events. They specifically touch on how people have felt disempowered due to the pandemic. I'm presuming what they mean right there is more about people's mental health because obviously lockdown and staying in your home all the time definitely impacts people's mental health. So I'm not 100% sure what they mean by disempowered because I don't think that's the feeling specifically people felt due to them being locked away in the house. I think their mental health were definitely affected. So if that's the route they're going for, rather than just talking about disempowerment, but talking about people's mental health being affected due to the pandemic, I think that's a really good angle to go with. And also they mentioned being inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'm interested how they tackle that. However, it must be stated that the showrunners are middle-aged white people who are very well off and very privileged. So for me, it raises a big question, are they the ones to tell this story? And I think it would be great if they get actual black writers on this rather than just hiring their normal, mostly white writers room. So I don't know the specifics about who writes all the episodes, but I really do feel like you need someone who is not completely privileged and is middle-aged and white to actually tackle a story related to the Black Lives Matter movement. So I really hope they get someone on that rather than just themselves. So I'm looking forward to all of this. And obviously I'm a huge supporter of all these themes. I mean, I even went 
to the Black Lives Matter protests in London. And if you guys have watched my channel over the years, I'm always super supportive of all of this stuff. And I think for the most part, they do a very good job. However, sometimes like in season four, like I said with the Children of Liberty, it felt very, very forced and didn't really work. And so I think they do need to focus on their storylines and their villains. And then after that, you implement, you know, the themes that you're going for. So that's kind of the gist of the article and that is my breakdown and thoughts on all of that. Obviously this is a lot of political stuff and you don't have to necessarily agree with my opinion on this or the showrunners and the way that they want to do it and you don't want it to go down like this, maybe you want it to go down a different way. Let's have a good nice conversation in the comments below. But for now let's move on to the next thing. So these are the promo photos that they've just released. So they release a bunch of extra ones for the premiere. So the first photo we see is of Lex Luthor. It is an awesome photo once again it's him causing destruction at the fortress of solitude you see like a bunch of weapons behind him there's like a case open and he's obviously in the fortress and so he's causing havoc here and this is obviously part of his big scheme that he is going through as of this episode and so he's also going to be in episode two that is definitely something to note down because they did release a synopsis for that and i am planning another supergirl video to talk about the trailer and when that is coming and the new promo and also they cast a new Kryptonian so that video is coming tomorrow so don't miss out on that but let's move on to the next photo so we got this photo of Nicole Maines as Dreamer so she's fully suited up and she is in the fortress so this is definitely at the point that Lex is in the fortress so we go back to the tower and again this stuff was shot in March because Melissa still has the bangs I'm presuming around episode 2 she's going to lose the bangs because obviously you know right now she doesn't have bangs and she's been filming for a while so this is old footage that they're going to be using in this episode and that's why Melissa has bangs in this specific photo so she's here in the fortress you've got Brainy and you've got John then we move on to the next photo you've got John and McGann and so again it seems like this is in the tower and McGann is going to be around for a couple of episodes then we go over back to the leviathan ship where we left off in the finale this was the final scene where brainy was about to die and so if we move on to the next photo it seems like this is the point that nicole mains's dreamer shows up and she will be saving brainy in this scene and brainy will be fine in just a bit okay so it seems like lena is in the fortress too and probably confronting lex at the same time that dreamer is there supergirl is there and everyone else and then we move on to the next photo. This is inside where we left Lex and his mum. You can see his mum in the background. Lex is using some sort of device. I'm not specifically sure what it is. It looks like a Kryptonian device. Maybe there's a Kryptonite piece in there. Or it could definitely have something to do with what he's going to be doing with Obsidian in this episode. Mind controlling half of the city to make sure that they follow him. That is kind of his main plan it seems. Okay, so this is a really cool photo. Now, this is the second to last photo, and this is Gamini. So, we weren't sure if she was going to come back, but then we got the premiere synopsis, and it confirmed that Supergirl is going to be facing off against her first. She turned into that demon robot at the end of last season, so we were like, are they going to wrap up the story or not? Well, it turns out, yes, they're going to wrap up her story before Lex's story in this episode, so... She is showing off her powers right here. She is coursing with energy and it looks like she is in the Leviathan ship and probably confronting Team Supergirl. So this is just a cool photo. She is like fully powering up and I'm presuming we're going to see that demon robot persona of hers very soon. Now moving on to the final photo, we have Kelly and Alex. And so they are talking to each other. It seems like this could be in the Leviathan ship. It kind of looks about right. However, it could be somewhere else. I don't know what specifically is happening, but I guess it's just good to see those two together, as always. But that is about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Also, if you want to become a member and join in on our monthly Zoom calls, which are going to be happening this Saturday, please be sure to click the join button and become a member today if you want to get involved, because now is the time. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.